Welcome back to Moose and Loose. My name's David, and today's top story is we've got an audio recording that's going around of Justin Trudeau where he supports the rights of people, newcomers coming to Canada, becoming citizens, and then becoming T-word people, bad people who do bad boom boom things. He thinks these people should have equal rights to all Canadians, Canadian-born people, and they should not be deported. This audio recording is absolutely crazy, and it's kind of blowing up right now. As you can see here, I'm traveling across the ocean. Unfortunately, in our beautiful country, as you can see here, this is remarkable. Justin Trudeau doesn't care about protecting this. Let's break this down as I travel from the port of Vancouver over to Vancouver Island. Our top story here, Justin Trudeau saying he has no problem keeping the T-word people, the pterodactyls, in our country. He says, no, that we can't take away their citizenship. If they come from another country and they terror activities, you get what I'm saying here, the word here, he doesn't think it's right to take away their citizenship. I don't know where this was recorded. It seems like it's some private liberal gathering, but it is appalling. Since 1947, when the Mackenzie King government passed her first citizenship act, there was a promise to new Canadians that they could be full citizens. And it's been taken away in this. The idea of actually removing citizens and deporting somebody who might have been born here, but happens to hold dual citizenship is absolutely disgusting. What are your views on it? Yes, yes. Uh, C24, uh, hmm. it's the bill that for me exemplifies the Conservatives' approach to politics. Because what they get to say with the Liberal Party's staunch opposition to C24, because we absolutely and thoroughly oppose it, is that, I'm gonna give you the quote, so you guys can jot it down and put it in an attack ad somewhere, that the, the Liberal Party believes that terrorists should get to keep their Canadian citizenship. It's crazy. <laughs> because I do. <laughs> And I'm willing to take on anyone who disagrees with that. <laughs> That's absolutely appalling. Why are they laughing? They, they act like a terrorist should be allowed to stay in this country. Like, what kind of loser would have that sort of mindset? If someone is terrible and they weren't born here, then they should be kicked out. As far as I'm concerned, if we have terrorists in our country and they're doing horrible things, we should be able to strip citizenship off of born Canadians. Why would we want to keep terrible people in our country? Why does Justin Trudeau want bad people in our country? Back in the old times, they had different ways of dealing with this, with, you know, things with ropes and sticks and all sorts of other things. And it has gone so woke that the terrorists have their rights. They can go and blow up people and streets and buildings, but they've got their rights. They can't have their citizenship taken away, even after they blow up a building and make a hundred people perish. What a disgusting statement from Justin Trudeau. Like, this is so stupid. Because the question is, as soon as you make citizenship for some Canadians conditional on good behavior, you devalue citizenship for everyone. Yeah. A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian. I mean, it should be based on good behavior. That's why you get to come here. You're a good person. We want in our country. We don't want terror in our country. They should be kicked out. This is ridiculous. Personally, I'm envious of new Canadians because I have no merit in being Canadian. It was an accident of birth. I got to be born here, and that's yeah, that's just what I am. New Canadians got to choose Canada. You got to choose to come to this country, or your parents chose to come to this country. And that's a very powerful statement. But we get to choose who gets to be let in, Justin. It's not they get to choose whatever country. Like if I wanted to move to Switzerland, I can't. Switzerland doesn't take people. They pick the best of the best. We've got Captain Schmuck here who has no problem with pterodactyls coming in from any country wreaking havoc in our streets. And the idea that we would say that we'll give you your citizenship, but for the rest of your life, you have to be on your best behavior. Now, you can say best behavior, fine, you get a traffic ticket, we're not going to deport you. But that principle, 
that says the government could decide that what you did means that you no longer get to be Canadian is a very, very scary one. And by the way, there are penalties for anyone convicted of a terrorist or an act of war or offense against Canada. They end up locked up in jail for the rest of their lives. Why would I or anyone else want to pay my tax dollars for someone else to sit in jail and play Xbox who wasn't born here, who came here, blew up some people, and now I have to pay for them to live in jail? That's ridiculous. Trudeau is an absolute idiot. The idea of someone having to be in good behavior, otherwise they get kicked out, I mean, there can easily be a program on that. We can easily make it so if it, someone has not committed any crimes at all, throw away you know, traffic tickets and all that kind of stuff, but like real crimes, and they've been here for 10 years, then they get full citizenship. They earn it. Why not have a system where, we're, where we bring in good people, they earn it, and then they get full citizenship for being good people? Right now, Trudeau brings in the worst of the worst. He allows anyone to come in to steal cars or do anything else. I mean, he just gave citizenship to a guy who, who removed another man's head on video. Like, <laughs> our country is just run by the stupidest people ever. We have not even stupid people, but terrible people running our country. Got this post by Brian Lilly. It says Trudeau and his office have been hiding his whereabouts. Sure, they send out a daily itinerary, but it's not accurate. They are effectively lying to the media and the public. Maybe that's because Trudeau gets heckled and humiliated everywhere he goes. I mean, when you're a bad leader, that tends to happen. We've got this post here. It says Trudeau has just appointed two more senators. That's 82 of a total of 105 or almost 80% control. They're supposed to be independent, but they're all hardcore left wing. The Senate controls the ability to pass any bill from the House. Yeah, this is not a good thing. I mean, if you've ever seen any of those clips I've put up, mostly on my second channel of the, the Senate, you've got Mark Gold, who it says independent. He, he's, he's not independent. He's a liberal. He's usually arguing with Don Plett, who I believe is retired now, or any of the other conservatives. And he's clearly not independent. Trudeau is stacking the deck here to make it really hard for the conservatives to pass any laws here or anything through the, the Senate in the future. Next up in the UK, this is where Canada is heading. This is what's going on. You've got three different guys, three different charges. So this guy posted a racist comment on Facebook, got 15 weeks in jail. This guy sold anti-immigration stickers. He's getting 24 months in prison. And this guy repeatedly R word, kind of like grape, but it's not the fruit. It's a different word that starts with R. A 12-year-old girl, he gets 180 hours of community service, no prison time. That's what's going on in UK. UK is more woke than us. They have already fallen. Their streets are being invaded. It's a slippery slope and we're getting close to this. Next up, we got some drone footage here of uh, Jasper, the before and after, it, copyright music, so I turned that off, but this is devastating. You can see it wiped out entire streets. You know, there's some houses left here, but we go ahead, you know, it just went through the town. It's about 40, 50, 60% is the estimates right now that I'm hearing. Go ahead here. So there's some stuff that saved, they used the main street as like a fire break and they saved a lot of the businesses, but it was mostly houses that got burned down. As you can see here, these like heartbreaking aerial shots. Got this one posted by Concerned Canadian says, this exemplifies the Trudeau government soft on crime mantra plus revolving door on bail. So we'll make this big here. You can see uh, crime in Canada, you know, it was going down with Harper, Trudeau gets in, kaboom. Like if this doesn't show it, I don't know what does. This is unreal. Got this posted by Table Salt it says, Toronto condo listings are the highest ever recorded as owners try to dump their cash flow negative properties. So we take a look at this graph here. So you see here for the GTA condo owners and basically what we're looking at here and as actually Table Salt mentioned, it's over 9,000 now. It, the people are just dumping their units, no one's buying them. So we have hit the saturation point and there appears to be uh, a crash coming. We've got this here, uh, Mohammed Adias El Siki, 37, has been arrested for allegedly taking photos up the skirts and dresses of women in Burlington Shoppers Drug Mart on three separate occasions. He's been charged with several counts of voyeurism and criminal harassment. Halton police say they were first called to the shopper's drug mart in Burlington on June 25th. We've got this Liberals plot to redistribute immigrants into small towns across Canada. Now, I just drove to Calgary and back. I'm at the Port of Vancouver, as I mentioned here, and I can talk on this, but first, let's just take a look what the report says. An access to information request reveals a memo sent to Immigration Minister Sean Frazier detailing the outcomes of a five-year pilot 
project titled Rural and Northern Immigration Pilot, launched in 2019, mostly consisted of newcomers already in Canada moving to rural areas primarily to help them find jobs and support economic development. I'm having problems logging in on my computer, but I have it on my phone here. So basically, so they chose 11 cities for this program being Vernon, BC, West Kootenai, Claire's Home, Alberta, Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, Brandon, Manitoba, Altona, Manitoba, Thunder Bay, Ontario, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Sudbury, Ontario, Timmins, Ontario, and North Bay, Ontario. I'm guessing a lot of these people being forced into these areas are then scattering from those areas as well. They have a, it says here a survey and four out of five people that were requested to report back to the government didn't, but of the uh, one out of five that did get back to the government, 87% said that, that they're planning on staying in these areas they're relocated to. The memo further indicates that some provinces won't like their plan. So it says communities have reacted positively to the annual allocations. The report acknowledges that it's too early to understand the long-term economic impact of the program in its short to medium term whether it has filled critical labor market needs. Accommodation and food services is the top sector with 28% of applicants, followed by healthcare and social assistance with 20% of applicants, it reads. The report also touches on low birth rates in these smaller, mostly conservative towns and their aging populations. It also acknowledges the pilot program was resource intensive and challenging to expand to capture more communities. So as I mentioned, I drove from Vancouver Island over to Alberta and back. I went through multiple communities. I took the route that goes up uh, through Hope and then up to Kamloops and then Sycamuse and Salmon Arm and Golden, Revelstoke, and then over to Calgary. And I noticed in all the small towns now, you're seeing noticeably, you can look around and seeing people that are clearly newcomers. I've lived in Canada my entire life. I don't know when the first time I saw someone wearing a turban was, but it, it, it wasn't a, a daily occurrence. It wasn't even a, a monthly or even yearly occurrence. I did grow up in Alberta, so you can take that with a grain of salt. But more when I started again around 18 years old, then, you know, people were coming into Calgary. And obviously, if you go into Surrey, there's, there's a big community there of people from India. But in the small communities now, I was walking around Sycamus, there was just plenty of guys walking around with turbans, people straight from India wearing, you know, the full shawls and clearly newcomers at least at some point, whether it was, you know, in the last year, last five years, whatever it may be. But even just behind me here, when I was setting up, there was five guys in turbans walking around here. So clearly there's a lot of people coming from India. We know that. Seems whether through their program, they're sending people around Canada to these smaller communities is the reason or people are just leaving the bigger areas like Toronto and Vancouver to go to smaller communities where the housing prices are a lot better, rent prices are a lot better. Who knows? Is it the people choosing to leave or is it Sean Fraser and Mark Miller? I don't know. With that said, we've got another article here saying rental costs surge in small cities. There's no wonder. People are moving, whether it's Canadians or newcomers that are, you know, placed in Toronto, Vancouver, they're all moving to smaller cities like Sycamus or, I mean, Kamloops is a pretty big place, but, you know, Revelstoke, Golden, or any other place across Canada. I'm just referring to the ones I went through on my road trip here. It says here the cost of renting an apartment in Canada continues to climb with a 5.9% increase in July compared to last year. Halifax experienced an alarming 18% year-over-year rent increase, 7% jump from the previous month. The prairies, since 2023, Saskatoon saw rent prices surge by 19% and Regina's rent climbed 15%. So, you know, this is not surprising that people are moving from Toronto and Vancouver, moving out to smaller places or smaller cities, still big cities, but smaller cities to get away from the high prices of Toronto and Vancouver. Let's jump over to my group and check out some memes. But first, I want to say big thanks to everyone who came out for the uh, meetup in Calgary. I just put it out 24 hours beforehand and about 35, 36 people showed up. I greatly appreciate it. Some of you gave some pretty hefty donations in person there, which I was blown away by so big thanks i love meeting everyone it was great having a chat with you guys i initially thought it was going to be about an hour but we were talking for about four hours out there so maybe i'll do up another one here at some point elon musk fired 90 percent of twitter's workforce and it still functions perfectly government employees <laughs> yeah government relations excessive taxation buying a vehicle starting a family home ownership yeah i mean this is canada it's just it's being piled up on us right now there's a report that came out that 50 percent of canadians are feeling heavily burdened, financially burdened by what's going on in Canada, the overtaxation, the high cost of everything. Alien, take me to your leader, us. Um, now, now it's not, not a good time. Once upon a time, a family could own a car, a home, and send their kids to college. All on one income, yeah, that's not happening anymore. You can't even buy a home on one income now. How sad is that? He's starting to show symptoms of free will and independent thought. 
put the news on the TV. <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. The great reset, the great resist. They will own nobody and they will be unhappy. Yeah, that's how, what's happening here. We've got a $26 inside round roast the things are just crazy i just i bought some rice noodles today and they used to be a dollar and now they're two dollars and 45 cents a pack i get just everything is doubled liberal voters while trudeau destroys the country yeah no kidding after hearing that audio recording of justin trudeau talking about supporting the rights the citizenship of t-word boom boom people the terrorists should get to keep their Canadian citizenship. Is the guy completely mad? Is he completely nuts? Or are all of us completely nuts?